welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner, and today is October 7, 2014. When we're not on air, you can always check out our information available at www.arh.noaa.gov and just click on the destination of your, your choice. And then you can always get our information via the phone line, dialing 1-800-472-0931. And you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Now moving on to the important topics of the day, we have some blizzard warnings that are still in effect for the northeastern areas of the Brooks Range and along the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast as a low pressure system just remains to the east of this area is bring gusty winds between 30 and 40 miles per hour and some snow. Expect snow totals between two and six inches with, a, with um, the highest amounts along the mountain ranges and expect these to expire on time at Wednesday at 6 a.m. Now looking at the weather that's coming our way, if you focus here just south of Shimia, we have the remnants of tropical storm fan phone, and that's going to be merging with a current front that's along the Aleutian area, pulling all this moisture along the southern part of the Bering Sea, putting that into motion one more time. You can see that fan phone is moving up towards the system that's out all, all the way stretched across the southern Bering. Now looking at closer to home, here's the front stretching from the western areas of the Alaska Peninsula back towards the western Aleutians. We have some low level clouds as a front moved through yesterday and reinforced some cold air across the interior parts of the state and along the southeastern areas and the Gulf waters, just partly cloudy skies here with the snow continuing just north of the Tanana Valley. At this point, the Tanana Valley blizzard warning had been canceled during the day today. So here we go, we have this um, plume of moisture that's heading up towards the Gulf of Alaska, stationary at the moment. And we'll take a, a look at this one more time, as you can see the clearing along the northern Gulf Coast and the western areas of the state. Looking at your surface map from today, we do have this surface low that's just to the southwest of the Dixon entrance here, mainly keeping moisture um, just out of the southeast for now, some offshore flow keeping areas dry across the Gulf waters, northwest flow along much of the western areas with the strong winds behind the low pressure system off um, the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, bringing snow along the eastern Brooks Range and a few uh, snow showers along the northwest coast during the day today. As the cold front pushed through yesterday, some weak waves um, remain coming through from that upper level system. Now this front across the central part of the bearing is bring gusty winds between 30 and 40 miles per hour with higher gusts up to 50 miles per hour during the day. And then looking at the backside of the system, it, really the winds are tapering off briefly for the areas near Shimia. So this low pressure system is going to shift a little bit east, so there is going to be an area where the winds stay weak just south of the central and western Aleutians. And the main focus of the winds will be along the frontal boundary with rain coming up through the central and eastern Aleutians towards the Alaska Peninsula o during the overnight hours. Again, gusty winds between 30 and 40 miles per hour with higher wind gusts between 50 and 60 miles per hour. Otherwise, staying mostly dry across the west overnight, allowing temperatures to be cool once again down into the 20s and teens and along the northwest. Quiet conditions here as well, some light showers, possible um, patchy fog just along the coast there. And then across the northwest, continuing gusty wind conditions along the eastern Brooks Range, eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, and then along the Gulf areas, mainly dry conditions, some weak disturbances just to the 
um, north of the Panhandle area, bring a mix of light rain or snow showers, but isolated conditions really. There's a chance for patchy fog to develop across the southeast as they um, are clearing out tonight. Temperatures will cool and then we have this front just to the south so the dew points are a little bit higher. Those temperatures will be dropping rather close to the dew point temperature here. And then as we head in your day on Wednesday, expect patchy fog to begin to clear up later in the day. Isolated showers mainly just staying just to uh, along the Dixon entrance, maybe a little bit further north, and then possible isolated shower activity will end during the afternoon along the northeastern Gulf Coast. Mainly dry conditions for another day across a large area of the mainland, and then snow beginning to taper up um, and just becoming light during the afternoon hours on Wednesday. Gusty winds will come down in the early morning hours, so that blizzard warning will expire at 6 a.m. Along the frontal areas uh, should stretch from near Cold Bay back towards Dutch Harbor. We'll see the brunt of the winds early on Wednesday and then all the way back towards the central Aleutians expect to feel uh, the winds gusting between 30 and 40 with gust to 60 and then we'll have continuous rain showers moving across this frontal boundary as it remains rather stationary for Wednesday. Some lighter shower activity to the north with gusty winds all the way up through the central part of the the uh, bearing with the, the Pribilof still s continuing to see the gust through your day tomorrow. And as we head into your Thursday, expect this front to continue to move a little bit further east. We'll see the winds beginning to taper off across the western Aleutians with some lighter showers hanging around on your day Thursday. This low pressure center will be centered just to the south of the Aleutian chain and this will be combined with the remnants of the tropical storm fanfone as it moves to the east. It'll combine with the upper level system that has been out here for a number of days and therefore it will <coughs> continue to be quite strong system as it heads towards the western gulf. The rain will start to move up into the western areas of the Gulf of Alaska and the low pressure system that was hanging out just around the Dixon entrance That'll help to push this warm front a little bit closer to the northern Gulf, bring some uh, increased chances for precipitation, mainly as rain along the coastal water, all the way up towards the northern Gulf Coast, possibly some isolated um, mixed precipitation along the northeastern coast. Low pressure will remain along the northeastern coast, bring some cold temperatures in behind it, some light snow shower activity during the day on Thursday, mainly across the northeast, with fairly quiet and clearer conditions across the, west, the northwestern coast. Now let's take a look at your temperatures for today. Uh, fairly warm in the mid-40s to near 50. Ketchikan was 54 during the afternoon hours, with mid-40s all across the north coastal areas and back towards the western gulf. Further inland, it stayed rather cool as we had a reinforcing cold air mass come through O overnight and we saw t temperatures only getting up into the mid-20s during the day today. The coldest temperature here was over in Atuvik Pass. They actually climbed up to 18 degrees before we reached 4 p.m. And then along the coastal areas, it was in the mid-20s and climbed slowly along the northwest coast into the mid-30s. Across the southwestern areas, they saw temperatures mainly in the mid-30s with the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians in the mid to upper 40s and the Pribilofs. Warmer system out towards the west has brought temperatures up in the 50s with Atka seeing 55 during the afternoon today. Looking at your temperatures for overnight, temperatures will fall into the mid 40s across the Aleutians and then across the southwestern areas, temperatures will drop down into the teens to lower 20s as they're gonna be under clear skies and much of the, the interior we'll see t temperatures in the teens with coastal areas along the north and northwest in the mid to lower 20s and the upper teens as well. And then look for mid 30s along the coast and then for the southeast, they'll see temperatures in the upper 30s and possibly near 40 as you get towards Juneau and Ketchikan's area. Looking at your daytime temperatures for tomorrow, climbing up into the mid 50s during the day along the southeast and then in the lower and mid 40s across the remainder of the Gulf Coast. And then across the interior temperatures again in the upper 20s for daytime highs and along the Brooks Range and North expect 
temperatures in the lower 20s to near 30 as you wrap around towards the Seward Peninsula, a quick change up into the mid 30s. Now along the west coast, expect temperatures to get into the mid 30s to near 40 degrees all across Bristol Bay and into the Alaska Peninsula, upper 40s, and then near 50 degrees across the Aleutian Chain and Pribilof Islands. Looking at your, your flying weather conditions for tomorrow, uh, possible MVFR conditions in the morning as temperatures drop close towards the dew point temperature and possibly some low clouds, but that'll clear later in the day. Across the northern tier, expect MVFR and IFR conditions across the Brooks Range and along the northern coast. Across the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula, widespread MVFR and IFR conditions across the central and possibly eastern part of the Aleutians. Taking a look at your passes in more depth, Anatuvik Pass will be MVFR with VFR to the south, and Adigan MVFR with IFR conditions to the north. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, both VFR, Rainy Pass, VFR, Windy Pass will be VFR, and Isabel VFR, and Mentasso will be MVFR, clearing to VFR later in the day. Tanita Pass will be mainly VFR, and clear conditions across Portage. Looking at Chilkoot and White Pass, both VFR conditions here. And then your freezing levels across the state is draped along the coastal areas and all across the northern coast. Then the 2,000 foot level across the northeastern gulf and back towards the Alaska Peninsula and along the northern areas of the Bering. And then it rising towards 6,000 feet into the southern part of the Bering and along the southern gulf of Alaska. Looking at your areas that you should be concerned for icing above six to 8,000 feet across the bearing, and then you'll see possible moderate conditions along the frontal boundary. Also, um, be aware that there might be some icing, light icing along the system that remains across the northeast, and that should be below 4,000 feet. Looking at your jet stream, primarily a westerly flow across the Aleutians and then a change in direction out of the east across the central parts of the bearing with a very strong jet stream, 145 knots on the south side here. And then across the state, mainly a north to northeasterly flow between 40 and 60 knots. Looking at your 9,000 foot winds, here's this low pressure system with the strongest easterly winds between 55 and 60 knots here. Across the state, mainly a northerly flow, lighter towards the southern areas and changing direction out of the southwest between 15 and 20 knots all through the southeast. Now looking at your 3,000 foot winds, a southerly flow across much of the Gulf waters between 10 and 15 knots, light northerly flow towards the north between 15 and 20 knots. And here's that system out that we're concerned between 55 and 60 knots. So the system is stacked and remains fairly strong close to the surface. Now looking at your turbulence, you should be more more concerned around this low pressure system as it heads towards the <coughs> heads towards the eastern Aleutians during the day and this should be between um, below 10,000 feet and this is mainly a turbulent for wind winds um, not so much the change of direction all right we'll be just back in just a moment with your marine forecast Hi, I'm Dr. Jessica Cherry. And I'm Forrest Kirst, a commercial pilot. And today we're gonna to talk about an experiment we're doing using a small aircraft where we've mounted a sensor package to the aircraft to measure temperature, humidity, and pressure, as well as elevation and longitude and latitude of the airplane. And with the package, we're going to sample the local winter inversion here in Fairbanks, Alaska. And an inversion is where you have the uh, the surface atmosphere that's, that's closest to the land is colder than the atmosphere above it, which is the opposite of, of normal conditions throughout the year throughout North America. Forrest, maybe you could tell us more about how a pilot experiences an inversion during the wintertime. 
on the ground during our pre-flight. It's very cold out this morning. It's minus 28 centigrade, which is about minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So doing our pre-flight, it's extremely cold, hard on the airplane, hard on the people. For flying at the colder temperatures for doing these experiments, we're somewhere between minus 20 and minus 40 degrees. So we have to dress for that temperature inside the airplane as well as when we're outside of the airplane. When we're doing our pre-flight, we have to be extremely careful not to damage the plastic parts on the outside of the airplane. Extremely careful not to touch the metal parts with, with our fingers because we'll get contact frostbite. And we have to be real careful just with everything because it's just so cold. We have to dress as if we're going to be outdoors the whole time and we use the aircraft heater to make it comfortable in our clothes and so we can see out the window. When we get the airplane running and we do our takeoff roll, we have increased engine performance and increased lift because of the colder, denser air. So we get off the ground earlier and have a better climb rate. When we reach the inversion layer, quite often the windows will fog up. The airplane's performance will decrease slightly because it's warmer air, produces less lift, and it produces less power from the engine. When an inversion is present, air doesn't move anywhere, especially it doesn't want to move up. And so the classic look there is uh, the steam out of the power plant or uh, automobile exhaust, any kind of wood smoke or such, will come out of a chimney and then just flatten out and, and not move up. And if it moves horizontally at all, it's very slow, just creeping along. When you see that kind of uh, lack of air movement, especially when there's clear skies, the sun is maybe low on the horizon, that is an inversion day in interior Alaska. The reason it is so cool in the far north during winter is that the incoming radiation is at such a low angle. Now, as the atmosphere begins to cool in late fall, we start to get snowfall, which causes the land surface to be white, and light colors reflect incoming radiation right back, which causes additional cooling. And it's the reason we have a, a persistent inversion from late fall through early spring here in Fairbanks. To get a radiation inversion to form, you need clear or mostly clear skies. You need no wind or very little wind down at the surface. And you need to have the sun under the horizon or high noon in uh, December such that even if the sun is up, it's so low, it doesn't really feed in any energy. When those three things happen, you lose heat to space from the surface of the Earth, but you're not getting any new heat in and you get a very cold layer of air hugging the ground, cold, dense air that just lays down in the, the bottom of the valley. That's the classic radiation inversion setup. So as we do our experiment with the aircraft, we're going to use a similar instrumentation package as is mounted on the, the standard weather balloons. We're going to measure temperature profiles, relative humidity, and pressure. And we're also going to tie the sensor package into a GPS unit, a global positioning system unit, so we know where the aircraft is located relative to the topography. So now I want to tell you about the instrument package that we're using on the aircraft. First of all, we use a NICAD 12-volt battery to power the data logger and the instruments. The data logger records the output from the meteorological sensors which here include a temperature and relative humidity sensor and a pressure transmitter, which works like a barometer to measure atmospheric pressure. This particular one is going to plug into the static port in the aircraft, which also helps power some of the aircraft instruments. Finally, we have the global positioning system computer, which measures the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the aircraft. This one has an accuracy of about 10 meters, which is perfectly fine for what we're trying to do here. Here's a picture of our temperature and relative humidity sensor installed on the aircraft. So this is an FAA-approved plate here mounted to the window. And we want the temperature sensor mounted towards the aft of the aircraft so we don't get air rushing in and it has a chance to equilibrate to the environmental conditions. And then finally, our pressure sensor is connected to this static port in the airplane, which again just measures the ambient 
pressure of the atmosphere where it hits this little hole in the plane. That's piped back into our pressure sensor inside. So one of the things that we're going to go out and do today is that uh, we're going to attach the sensor package to the aircraft and then Forrest is going to take off from Fairbanks International. To get repeatability for the data, we flew in and out of Fairbanks International, Nanana Airport, Ladd Army Airfield, and Eielson Airfield. So we do a, a very slow climb up through the inversion layer, climbing at about 100 feet per minute. Just a very slow climb to the top of the inversion, find out where the ceiling is. And then once we're at the ceiling of the inversion, we do very slow porpoising up and down through the inversion to see if it's stable, if it's got different characteristics throughout it. Then we get to the next airport and we do a very slow descent into the airport at about 100 feet per minute, all the way to the ground. And welcome back to the show. Now on to your marine forecast. As you can see, we have some light icing beginning to ve develop all across the north coast here and some areas along the bays and bays um, along the northwest near Point Point Lay. So the ice is continuing to grow at this time of the year, so expect that to be on the increase as they have some very cold temperatures on the way. Now along the inner channels across the southeast for tomorrow, light winds between 10 and 15 knots, and then out of the southeast at 20 knots towards the, um, the Dixon entrance, sees the in in the inner channels will be between two and four feet. The outer waters will pretty much have a, an easterly flow across the area between 15 and 20 knots with seas between five and six feet. Looking at your Thursday forecast, expect gustier conditions, especially along the outer waters between uh, 30 and 35 knots, higher gust uh, along the eastern gulf here, and then expect the wind direction to be primarily out of the southeast except for the northern Lynn Canal area where it will be out of the north and 20 to 25 knots so small craft towards the Dixon entrance and then we'll see seas between four and five feet along the inner channel seas between eight and nine feet across the outer waters taking a look at the south central expect a east to northeasterly flow all across the area with small crafts across the southern part of the Cook Inlet the Shellacoff Strait and around just to the west just to the west of the Barren Islands here. And then seas across the Prince William Sound for tomorrow at two feet and three to five feet across the Western Gulf and between four and seven feet across the Cook Inlet and the Shellacoff Strait. Looking at your Thursday forecast, stronger winds with the system moving to the north and possibly storm force winds felt in Shellacoff Strait by late Thursday. And then gusty gale winds all across much of the Gulf waters between 30 and 40 knots. Prince William Sound will see winds between 20 and 30 knots along as the northern Gulf. And then small crafts along the northern inlet, 25 knots, gales across the southern inlet sh and down towards the Shellacoff Strait. We'll see seas between fi five and 10 feet, and then Shellacoff Strait will be 15 feet. And then along the western Gulf areas, expect seas around 17 feet with um, lighter seas across the northern between 11 and 13 feet, and Prince William Sound, like I said, was four feet. Looking at your uh, Gulf of, I'm sorry, your Alaska Peninsula, winds will primarily be out of the northeast direction between 30 and 40 knots with gales along the western areas of the Alaska Peninsula. Seas along the Bering side will be between seven and 12 feet. And then along the Pacific side, expect seas from 10 to 17 feet, the highest seas just south of the peninsula. Looking at your Thursday forecast, very much the same with gales um, included all the way up towards Bristol Bay between 35 and 40 knots and 35 knots to the south, all out of the north and east again. Seas will be between 8 and 16 feet. Higher seas on the Pacific will be between 19 and 21 feet. And then your, west, your Wednesday forecast for your Aleutians all the way out to the Aleutians, mainly a gale forecast between 35 and 45 knots. So max gales for, for your Wednesday. And seas will be between 18 and 24 feet with possibly 26 foot seas out towards the western Aleutians. As we head into your Thursday forecast, expect winds to taper off towards the western Aleutians out of the northeast 
direction at 30 knots and the remainder of the Aleutians will see another day of gales between 35 and 40 knots. We'll see seas between 22 and 26 feet again on Thursday on the Bering side and between 22 and 23 feet with a northerly direction on your Pacific side. Looking at your western coast, expect gales across much of the area between 35 and 40 knots, a little bit lighter wind speeds towards St. Lawrence Island at 20, 20 knots. And then looking at a uh, wind direction out of the northeast with the seas between seven and nine feet along the west coast and higher seas out towards the Pribilof Islands between 17 and 18 feet for St. Matthew to the Pribilof Islands. Looking at your Thursday forecast, mainly a gale forecast, persistence um, is the word through your Thursday, with 35 to 40 knot winds out of the northeast, seas again between 9 and 17 feet, the highest seas towards the Pribilof Islands. Now across the northwest coast and the north, expect a northerly flow across the area around 10 to 15 knots until you get around the eastern Beaufort Sea coast where stronger winds, gale, gale winds out towards the eastern Beaufort Sea. Look for a high surf advisory there and seas will be between six and nine feet with freezing spray as an issue all across that eastern Beaufort area. Across the northwest and back towards Costa Bue Sound, look for seas between two and four feet here. On your Wednesday forecast, looking at a primarily a north wind with small craft advisory and freezing spray along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Once again, seas this day will be between three and six feet with the lightest seas across the Kotzebue Sound. Once again, fronts moving up towards the western part of the Gulf of Alaska by Wednesday. Otherwise, drier conditions across the remaining of the state with the blizzard warning ending tomorrow morning. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Thanks for staying with These us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan.